and Gianluca Taholi, hello. The Morning. United States are currently making headlines in the financial, political, and economic world. The media is focusing on the personality of the new president, Donald Trump, and on his campaign promises. For these reasons, there's much less talk of the Eurozone, but if we look closely, since the financial crisis of 2008, it has disappointed many not fulfilled expectations and has even known a greater crisis in 2011 and 2012 and it's far behind the economic cycle of the United States. So where are we today concerning the Eurozone? As you rightly pointed out, uh, Eurozone went to, through two uh, major uh, recessions. Uh, while in the US we went uh, only through uh, one into all eight. Uh, the result of this is that today we have a level of uh, a real GDP reached by the US that is already 12% above the peak of 2007, while in the Eurozone we are still uh, only 2 or 3% uh, above this level. Uh, and in the Eurozone we still have some countries, such as Spain or Italy, that have, that have a level of GDP that is still below uh, the 2007 uh, peak reached. Uh, on top of that, we can also mention the investments. The investments are in the US already 10% above the level of 2007, while in the Eurozone we are still 10% below. Uh, finally, in terms of unemployment, uh, in the US we, went, uh, we reached a peak of unemployment rate at 10% in 2009. Today we are at 4.6%. In Eurozone, the decline has been much smaller. Uh, the peak of the unemployment rate was at 12.1% and we are just at 9.8%. 9 9 so the margins to uh, recover in Europe are still much greater than in the US. So what are the perspectives uh, for the Eurozone in 2017? In Eurozone, uh, we think that growth can continue to uh, be at the current level of roughly 1.5, 1.6%. We have all leading economic indicators that are consistent with such level of growth. Uh, but the most important thing for us is that we observed over the past year that the uh, growth has enlarged its base. Uh, here we have all the countries, members of the Eurozone, that are now contributing positively to the growth. And we also have uh, consumptions, investments, uh, external trade and government spending that are all contributing positively to uh, the growth. A growth rate of 1.5%, isn't that a, a bit weak to talk about an upturn? Well, it may seem uh, weak in com international comparison or by historical perspective, but we need to compare this level of growth to the potential level of growth of the economy. The potential level of growth of an economy is defined as being the sum of productivity gains and population growth. In the Eurozone today, the uh, level of potential growth is estimated of around 1% because we have weak demographics and also uh, productivity gains that are weaker than in the past. Hence, a current level of growth of 1.5% is quite nice compared to the potential growth of 1%. And this can be seen via the fact that the unemployment rate is able to decline in this environment of growth. Important elections will be held in several European countries such as France and Germany. Isn't that also a risk? Of course, in Europe we will have uh, politicians that will focus uh, in 2017 on politics uh, uh, and domestic politics. Uh, hence, we can't see in 2017 uh, any major advance in the European construction. Uh, but we do not have to forget that we have still the Juncker plan that is currently active. It is designed to, inv to finance uh, investments in innovation and research, and it can uh, contribute by 0.75% of growth for the Eurozone. So it's not something that we can neglect. So how do you translate these future prospects for the Eurozone into your investment policies? With a preference for European equities compared to US ones. Uh, in Eurozone, we still have the level of profits that is 20% below the peak of 2007, while in the US we are already 30% above this level. On top of that, we can also have some kind of bonus coming from valuation. Uh, European equities uh, are discounted by around 10% by around compared to US ones. So we think and we hope that 2017 will be finally the year of outperformance of European equities compared to US ones. Thank you very much for your analysis. Thank you.